My guest today just got off the keynote stage. Here to talk more about Microsoft 365 and the era of AI, please welcome Rajesh Shah. Thank you, Karimana. Thank you. It's I'm so happy here. that you're here. I don't know if our audience knows, but I work in your division, and it's just been such an exciting ride. And I think we're just at the beginning of this, right? We are very much at the beginning. Eight months from when we first showed our vision video, I'm incredibly proud of the team. You know, staying close with customers, iterating, learning, you know, and we've got a long way to go, but I'm very excited about the progress. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, there's so much insight that the rest of the team gets from how we're working with customers. Talk a little bit more about being ready to deploy Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. What are, you, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, like I said in the keynote, the one thing that we have already been doing for our customers is to basically hydrate or build a Microsoft Graph so the Microsoft Graph really captures the end users, tasks, projects, emails, conversations, their work group, and so on. But the important thing about the Microsoft Graph is it inherits the existing permissions and policies that enterprises have put. So a big part of that work is done, but I do think uh, enterprises, it would be great for them to actually go and take a look at the permissioning and the policies that they have on their data. The Copilot's quite capable. I mean, in terms of if you have confidential documents that you do not want the Copilot to summarize, though Copilot will respect that kind of a sensitivity label. So I would tell customers, you know, hey, go. Sometimes we are over provisioned, are over over permissioned, I should say, in terms of what people, you know, what do people have access to. So any hygiene around permission management, which, as you know, Karina, we now have a tool for that in SharePoint. Yes. And then take a look at your conditional access policies, take a look at the sensitivity labels. The other thing in terms of getting ready on the fundamentals is I would encourage customers to get on to the monthly uh, channel because that allows the co-pilot and, you know, to iterate rapidly. In fact, that's one of the requirements we have on Windows for customers to be on Office monthly channel. So once you've got the fundamentals going in terms of getting the right data hygiene, and the other thing that you could do on data is actually, like we said in the keynote and Satya talked about, you can extend the graph with relevant line of business data that allows scenarios that really matter to the employees to also be sur surfaced in the co-pilot. It's, it's so important what you're saying there, and I, and I want to make sure that people really understand that a good deal of this tenant hygiene, if you will, uh, was already available. It's available today. It These built are existing into the Microsoft capabilities, graphs. Yeah. right? Existing capabilities, and so you know, there's a fantastic session on these sorts of governance policies that folks can look at in the session scheduler. But I want to turn this a little bit to the IT pros who are listening. I feel like this is an incredible moment for us from a career perspective, for us individually, as well as for the organizations we serve. How do you think about this as an IT pro and what this means to us, what we need to do to be ready to support our organizations with Copilot? Yeah, it's a great question. So, you know, we talked about the, the fact that a lot of the heavy lifting on data and permissions is done because a co-pilot really works on your behalf, so it inherits all the policies and data. But like you said, I mean, beyond just that, how do you, how do you deploy and how do you drive adoption? So the first thing I'll just say is we've now brought all our deployment and adoption guidance around the co-pilot into a singular place. Uh, and your account teams and the product teams are ready to assist customers as they go through the deployment and the adoption. But the first thing about deployment is really deciding how do you want to assign the licenses. And as we've engaged deeply with hundreds of customers over the last few months as they've deployed the Copilot in the preview, one thing that is, uh, one thing that is clear is adoption amplifies itself in a given work group. So if you have a choice between deploying the co-pilot to a few users in a work group, a few users in another work group. Our experience is that even if you deploy it entirely to one work group, there is an amplification in the adoption. And you know, the, key, uh, the keynote, we also talked about the impact dashboard that is now available for customers to see, you know, how is the adoption going? You know, how is the deployment going? Is the work, are the workflows changing? So that's the, the planning part. But at the end of the day, IT pros, what they can really do is to be the drivers of this new way of work. We used to have graphical user interface. Now we have human beings being assisted by AI using natural language. 
And so, you know, anointing champions, uh, letting people, you know, wait on how workflow should be rethought. So as you know, Carvana, we are building a community of co-pilot customers so IT pros can learn from their peers in the same industry, across different industries. And then we talked about the notion of co-pilot labs. Because if you think about it, for 30 years, we've been refining the graphical user interface, menus, ribbons, swipe gestures. Right. Now people are using prompts. That's right. And so the Copilot Labs is about bringing the best practices of these prompts to bear. And then IT pros, over time, we want to give them a way to actually program the most relevant prompts for their organization, for their functions. So Absolutely. excited to be on this journey. Well, and you couldn't make me happier to talk about adoption.microsoft.com and the communities of practice. They're very important with the rapid feedback cycles. And we like to talk about people having that personal aha moment with Copilot. And then their creativity is unleashed. They're having totally this right. personal moment with it. But some of the customers that we serve work in regulated industries. And yeah. you talked about some more of those capabilities uh, in your keynote. But how should we be thinking about this in the regulated space? I mean, I want uh, every customer in a regulated space, if Microsoft 365 meets your expectations, which I know it does, because we serve regulated customers across different industries and governments, the Copilot is going to meet all the same expectations. And so that's why we spend the time, not just the end user impact, but making sure that IT pros and security and compliance and the risk folks and the governance folks felt that all the enterprise policies are respected by the Copilot. So Copilot understands conditional access, understands information barrier, understands sensitivity labels on documents and meetings. And by the way, thank you for the feedback. I mean, to our customers, I would say the early pilot customers, it was based on your feedback that we made the meeting Copilot not require the persistence of the transcript. Because I know in some regulated environments, you cannot have that. Uh, so anyway, so keep the feedback going, but I feel incredibly good about it being enterprise grade and ready to be deployed by our enterprise customers 100%. and regulated industries. Yeah, yeah 100%. And, and the other piece of that is we're reading that feedback every day. I mean, oh, the yeah. engineering yeah, teams absolutely. are deep in the feedback that the early customers are giving us, but now are generally available customers as absolutely. well. Absolutely. I mean, this is really a culture of feedback that we have uh, so well inside, so inside well said. our space. Yeah. I think it's important for people to, to understand that. Um, you know, one of the things that folks may not understand about you is that you work closely with customers. You directly work with customers all the time. I find that inspiring personally, because I think the customers teach us so much oh, so about our own services. And I love, you know, having that interaction. What have you learned from customers recently? I mean, I, I think the common theme from customers are I would put in three or four categories. Number one is, how do we get ready? And so we talked about that. Right. You know, the adoption guidelines, the planning, the impact dashboard, you know, taking a look at <clears throat> uh, all the different policies. But I feel we are on a good path there because, you know, if you're on M365, all the work you've done gets inherited by the co-pilot. So that's thing one, how do we get ready? Thing two is, how do we drive change in our organization? Mm -hmm. Because you know, customers see the same thing as we do. It's a new way of working. And that's why we did the work to take the Copilot into existing workflows for our users. But I do think customers have an opportunity to think about where do they want to rethink workflows. Yes. If there are people doing incredibly high value work in your organization, one of the things that you saw in the work trend index is 70%, does, not only does the Copilot help you 70% of the time be more efficient, but it is also helping 68% of the time, people say it makes the quality of their work better. Yes. So for customers to think about which workflows, which departments do they want to go from in terms of amplifying the human ingenuity, but in some cases it's about taking cost out because you can drive more efficiency. So the planning is the other thing that you know, uh, we talked about. Another piece of feedback we get from customers is going back to enterprise data yes. protection. And we've done the work and we continue to iterate with customers on that. And finally, I would say for customers, it's like, are we getting the ROI from this? And that's why we build the impact dashboard. So you can actually track in your context, in your departments, with your employees, are you getting 
the that, payoff. And I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. That's so important because we're evolving now from talking about just core adoption, who's using it, to that true user satisfaction. Absolutely. It's so important. Thank Absolutely. you. Well, thank, thank you, you for Caroline. joining us here today oh, and all your insights. I appreciate it so well, thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you, Rajesh. Thanks.